I've always been fascinated by the sense of smell. It's so underrated and we use our nose in so many ways that we're not even aware of or most people aren't even aware of. So it was just natural that I would incorporate that as an element in my central character. But I didn't realize until I got to know Dr. Joan Parker better and got deep into the story that it would lead to this, that, it, that it, the sense of smell just took over and it became a nose for death. Former filmmaker Glynis Whiting has turned to writing prose. Her first book, A Nose for Death, has won the Mayor of Vancouver Award for Emerging Literary Artists. She is now working on a second Nosy Parker murder mystery. Originally, my detective had a different last name, but I soon came to realize that she was a Nosy Parker. So A Nose for Death is set at a high school reunion, and I'd always been curious about high school reunions because I dropped out before I finished high school and then went back to school later. So I'd always been curious about getting together with a bunch of people who you haven't seen in, in decades. So when Dr. Joan Parker arrives at her old hometown for the high school reunion, she feels very uncomfortable. Her, she'd left town under a dark cloud in her grade 12 year and didn't actually graduate like I didn't graduate. And so it leads right into the imposter syndrome, which is another thing that I've always found quite fascinating and seems to affect women more than men, although a lot of men feel it too, when competent people feel that they don't deserve what they've achieved, when competent fe people feel incompetent. So I think a lot of people carry a lot of angst and anger and all sorts of other emotions with them from high school and those teenage years without ever, ever knowing it and without ever validating it. And I think by, by well certainly writing A Nose for Death was a cathartic experience for me and I think, I think readers get that out of it too. So. For all these years, I thought that I had been missing out on, on my high school reunions. But when I got a hold of people I had gone to school with, it turns out that in 40 years, they'd never had a high school reunion. But that 40th high school reunion coincided with the launch of A Nose for Death. So I decided that I would throw a murder mystery party for the people that I'd gone to school with, brewing up murder and each one of them um, had a character based on who they really were and they got to solve a murder, the murder of somebody in their class, uh, the class, somebody we'd all gone to school with for years, one of the nicest people in the class and I think that th it, that part was a real cathartic experience for everybody involved. So a lot of people have asked me why I would write a murder mystery and so, well, the, the first adult book I ever read was an Agatha Christie mystery. And um, one of the first films I ever made was Blood Clan, which was a, a gothic murder mystery set in, in Alberta. <laughs> um, I've been making films for 30 years, uh, primarily documentaries, some science docs for the nature of things, some very serious social documentaries. Although the last film that I made was more light-hearted, it was uh, Time Steps, is a feature-length documentary about a group of amazing, inspiring uh, tap dancers who are ranging in age from 50 to 80. So making the transition from writing and directing for film to writing prose has been life-altering. It's, um, it's been like skating on a new sheet of ice or, or learning a new dance. It's like any transition where suddenly it feels like all the walls are down and anything is possible. So whether it's making a film or writing a book, I just love to do research. And researching the senses has been particularly fascinating. Although sometimes I do get 
sidetracked. Um, did you know that the dog can smell 100,000 times better than humans? They can smell one drop of blood in a five-gallon pail of water? The sense of smell is known as the memory sense because the olfactory bulb is located right next to the location in your brain where we store memories. The sense of smell, in evolutionary terms, is the oldest sense. Women, in general terms, have a better sense of smell than men. Our sense of smell is strongest when we're hungry. Humans can differentiate between one trillion different smells, but we can only name a very few. So the next Nosy Parker murder mystery takes Joan from Pender Island to Edinburgh. I'm not going to give away the plot, but I will tell you there'll be plenty of sniffing, a dead body or two, and copious amounts of scotch. <laughs>